General Otafire, the Minister for Internal Affairs, who I think has now turned this ministry into his retirement nest. He never attended his parliament. So can the Prime Minister tell us and assure Parliament that Jaja uh, Otafire, who is using the minister as a term, will now come here and answer? Six. The Honorable Otafire and the General Mohozi are the members of Cabinet who are charged with the responsibility of that docket. I remember we agreed here that we have a rota where ministers will be attending, especially those ministries that have more than one minister. And so when you see General Mohose here, the ministry is ably represented. Otafire is a neighbor minister. Is one because the other day he was representing government at the Muslim function. Very able and strong. Information. Thank you. Honorable colleagues, I've already guided on what the Prime Minister is going to do. Because the biggest challenge is to do with guidance. And, and where is this coming from? I was chatting with uh, Honorable Saro Pendi. You know, there is a campaign which had been going on called Fear Women. You, you saw it, it came as a document, then it started going Fear Women. Now, some uh, information we got, there are some groups uh, with this role eh, uh, who brought it up and all that, but all these things are speculation. So we hope the Prime Minister will be able to do a thorough job and agree how best how we can handle this. Shona, you have a you have uh, briefed us about the recent meetings. I have two issues. First, the Honorable Nawagawe, by our rules here, was appointed by her party to represent the opposition on IPU. I have seen her here when IPU is going on. Can we be told uh, as a parliament what happened to her? Has she refused that assignment? Two, Mr. Speaker, the point that you made about us, and I want to thank the Honorable Cecilia Ogwa, when we demand competence, we don't do so because we are against some people. When you have the Honorable Cecilia Ogwa represent you, everybody will be happy. But when you pick people who are just uh, experienced in milking cows and you send them to international organizations, <laughs> <laughs> point of order. Speaker. Right on a speaker. Oh, colleagues, please, let's listen to one of our colleagues. Is it in order, right on a speaker, for a senior member of this house to use a language that demeans people who know a certain activity and try to present them as incompetent? Is Honorable, is honorable Semuju. Is Honorable Semuju in order to protection on the right the speaker? Go, go on, go on. Is Honorable Semuju in order to insinuate that people who know how to milk cows cannot represent this country? Is Honorable Semuju in order? Thank you. Uh, Honorable colleagues, I, I, I really want us to be serious on some matters. Delegations of parliament are formed by members of parliament. Whether someone is experienced, whether someone is a teacher, whether someone has been a sweeper, that person earned, you know? 
that person went through the same process to come here, like any of us. So I, I think it is, it is very... If, 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 for example, we are saying informing parliamentary delegations, we can go, we pick strangers. They become part of parliamentary delegations and go and represent parliament. Okay? Then it would be understandable. But when it's a member of parliament, I think we can use the language which is uh, more acceptable. Mr. Speaker, I don't mean anyone. I am actually commenting on your communication. Because you said when you went with Honorable Kate Shuma because of his experience, he added the value. I would not add the same value. I am just using the same language, but they're saying the same thing that you said, sir. So the <coughs> Honorable Semuju, I didn't use. What I said on Honorable Kate Shumba, I said on trade matters. We handle matters that are different. When it's matters to do with medical, I will pick a medical doctor. When it's matters to do, you get it. So uh, really, it's uh, any member of parliament is competent to handle any matter in the house. So let us respect each other. I, I am sorry, Mr. Thank Speaker. The, the second point I wanted to raise, Mr. Speaker. No, when a member is sorry, colleagues, it is noted on the answer. Okay? Yeah. Right. Finally, Mr. Speaker, we, we want to be one delegation at international conferences. But when you have tortured me here, you have brutalized me. It is like a people who brutalize their spouses. When you appear in the public, it will show on your faces. In fact, for me, if you take me to an international conference, I may not be as smiling as NRM. So can I be guided? After torturing us here and then you put us on the same plane to go and representing Uganda, how do you want us to behave when we reach there? Thank you. Uh, I want to confirm to one of our colleagues. I want to confirm to one of our colleagues that all members of parliament we put on delegations are always smiling. Yes. And I also want to confirm that from all sides you are always robbing to be put on those delegations. Yes. yes, I want to put it on record that from all sides, opposition NRM members ask to be put on delegations. Yes. So, and those ones who don't want to be put on delegations, I will be happy once you create space for others. Yes. I, I, I would be, I would be, you'd, you'd have uh, made my work with you. But what I said, which is very critical, Honorable uh, Semuji, uh, is in, before you go as colleagues, you always have an agenda. You meet, you agree on how to discuss an agenda. Okay? And I believe uh, the head of the delegation will always agree with you. It doesn't mean that you, you go to hide everything, say you go to... No. But you go in knowing that the government might be doing something wrong, but what I'm doing, am I damaging the country? You differentiate between damaging a government and damaging a country. And, and that, of course, depends on your own judgment as a colleague. So far, the delegations I've had, we've not had issues of that nature. Uh, now people have known a shortcut. If you want to stand procedure, procedure. Thank you, right honorable speaker. I want to join the colleagues to applaud your team that ably represented us in uh, that uh, international conference. And uh, particularly when you made a clarion call on the United Nations Security Council to consider according Africa two permanent seats. But Mr. Speaker, it may take ages until Africa has a nuclear weapon. Mr. Speaker, in your communication, the distant alert, we had, had a recent one, and they normally come from the conceptual waste. The other one of the United States government, now this time, United Kingdom terror alert. And they are always, more often than not, they predict accurately. Even this one may come to pass. But it's good that you interacted with the, 
the member of parliament of the United Kingdom. No, I read the answer. I didn't interrupt. Oh, it's good you read that I read answer. The answer yeah. And the answer they helped to let the cut out of the basket. And you got to know that Uganda is working in isolation. There is a serious gap, maybe, in the intelligence. Intelligence gathering is one thing, but intelligence sharing is another. These particular MPs castigating Uganda for working in isolation, for not reaching out or cooperating with these superior uh, powers that have always been predicting these terror alerts. And this has endangered our citizenry, Mr. Speaker, sir. Don't you think it would be prudent to require a statement from the relevant line minister to explain why they are working in isolation and are failing to move from isolation to cooperation? Thank in you. sharing intelligence. Thank you. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Right Honourable Speaker, the relevant minister will come here. And he will come here at an appropriate time, Right Honourable Speaker. So can we give it to the Right Honourable Prime Minister? Next week. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Is the issue of the current DNA test Now, I don't know whether some of you are foreign victims. <laughs> uh, you know, that's an issue which, which you swallow around quietly. So some of you might be seated on it. But we have cancerous in parliament. If you're having such a challenge, such a problem, uh, please. But, but uh, uh, why, I've talked, why I've talked about this issue, right on your prime minister and on your colleagues, is because I think we need to guide the nation. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, you need to come out, you guide the nation. Because what is going on, you know, innocent children are falling victims. You know, you don't know what your parents were doing, you don't know whatever happened. All of a sudden, you see someone saying, stop using my name. Someone is saying, bring back your national ID. It bears my name, so I want to go and change it. And... And one of our colleagues, as you know, uh, Ugandans are very sharp. Now, in every corner, you're going to have an, a, a, a DNA laboratory. So we want to know how is this regulated? How, is, how should it be handled? These young children that are, be, are being chased out of homes eh? and schools, what are we going to do about it? Uh, and, and, uh, and really... Uh, the boy child is committing suicide. Men are suffering. Eh? Seriously. Eh? Now, at least the mothers, for them, they know who the father of the children. <laughs> but the men are, are in big trouble. So, we need a right one of Prime Minister. Uh, at least you come out, you guide the nation on this matter. We see how best we can counsel these people. Maybe if there are regulations around it, but we just don't leave it. And also us men who are out there. By the time you go to make a test for around 16 people, 16 children, really, you have, you have given birth to 16 children, which means also you have your own issues. Yeah. And, and you might find someone, maybe if you're a huh? if you're a hajj, but you might find someone is also looking after your own children somewhere. Yeah. Some of you, eh? someone is looking after your own children. And, uh, eh? So anyway, right on your Prime Minister, uh, I assign, uh, I request you, you get time. If you want to do it here, we shall give you space. If you want to use media center or this one, or you have our support, right on your Prime Minister, uh, on this issue. Uh, on our Minister. Thank you very much, right on our Speaker. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I also don't know what is motivating married men to rush for DNA tests because it has become another pandemic. But, but I have discussed. But, co colleagues, let's. Uh, yes, please, co colleagues, 
Or is, uh, let's have order on this matter. You see, you might find, oh no, you might find in this house, we even have some of them hiding children. <laughs> huh? oh, oh, huh? And some of you fathers knowing that you have children somewhere and you're hiding. So it's a serious matter. Hmm? Let's not put a lot of emotion. Honorable Adjemusi. Right, Honorable Speaker, it's a, it's a very serious order. matter. Colleagues, order. Please, let's have, let's have order in the house. It's a very serious matter which is even resulting in two suicides and it has to be addressed. I have discussed this morning with the Minister of Health and uh, while for now it might be difficult to prevent or stop anybody from going for a test, but the concern, part of the concern is the quality of the laboratories and maybe the tests being carried out and the Minister of, this, of Health this morning under the leadership of the Commissioner for Laboratories, the Allied Health Professional Council and the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council held a meeting with the various laboratory owners and managers and an assessment is being carried out to check are uh, these laboratories accredited, are uh, the clinics accredited, because it could be possible that people are running to clinics and labs which are not accredited by the Minister of Health and could be giving even the false results. So the Minister of Health, the Minister of Health promised that within two weeks she will come to Parliament, even out through the lead of government business, to give a list of laboratories which are accredited and authentic so that we can guide the country on if you want to carry out a test, where you can go. So I wanted to give that information. Luckily enough, the people, when they had the bullets, swung in action, and uh, one of them knocked the, the thug holding a gun, AK-47 rifle, and he was arrested. The gun was recovered, and the police established that the gun was uh, a UPDF property, but also one of the thugs was a UPDF officer from uh, Chikubamutwe Barracks in Kayunga. Right Honorable Speaker, mobile money. Right Honorable Speaker, there is rampant involvement of uh, security personnel involved in uh, uh, armed robberies and murders going on in the country. So my prayer is one. I want uh, government to compensate the victims. Number two, I wish the Minister of uh, Defense and that of Internal Affairs to explain why the increased involvement of security personnel in such matters. Then three, right Honorable Speaker, we are all aware that uh, majority of the police posts Conclude, Honorable. Thank you. Majority of uh, the police posts we are removed from uh, our constituencies and uh, the IGP did not increase the number of policemen on patrols, and that's why there is increased insecurity in our various constituencies. So I wonder why... Honorable, you've already made your prayer. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Right Honorable. Right Honorable Prime Minister. My opinion is men should just accept and raise these children. Uh, many of us lived with our brothers and sisters whom we are not sure whether they were for our fathers. Our great-great-grandfathers raised the children who were not theirs. They were from the neighborhood, from elsewhere, but they grew up and they loved them. They looked after them. Did they die? Men, my advice is, please raise these children. You've already bonded with them. There's no need for you to go for DNA. You're inviting death for yourselves. Why would we be inviting death? Be because if the results are turn out to be 
um, negative, negative I mean the child is not yours. Of course there is trauma, there is stress for you and the end result is to end your life. Not only yours, but even the child who is being traumatized. You, you never know what could happen. About uh, that one, I, I welcome that idea of regulating because now there are so many laboratories that are going to mushroom because they want to make money out of this. Some people are looking at it as business and we are not sure whether they are genuine or not. Uh, first of all, as a person, I'm disappointed with the Minister of Health because by now they should have guided, they should have printed the certified laboratories that can do these tests. Uh, in most cases, these tests are not done on good faith. Either somebody is looking for property or somebody is trying to dodge a responsibility. So there is always an intention which may not be a good intention. That means somebody can even manipulate and get results according to what the person wants. So the ministry by now should have guided that these are certified centers where you can do tests from. And I, I want to commend Ugandans. They are very strong. By now, people should have committed suicide. You can imagine if you end test for HIV and they say you are positive when you are not even when you are negative, you can you, you can commit suicide. So the ministry should guide which centers and why. But also importantly, we should not take this as as, as something for leisure that if you feel like testing, you should go and test. No, there should be a condition. You are testing for what? I would prefer a court order that there is an order and they want to prove something beyond reasonable doubt. And there is also a judgment or, or a decision that will be taken. So the Ministry of Health should come out with the certified centers where people can go and do the tests. Otherwise, some people may want to take advantage and do the tests and manipulate results because the intentions are not good intentions. My name is Kazin Francis, a member of parliament of Haguzi County. It is true DNA test it is a talk of the day. Everywhere you go these days, they are talking about it. But to me, I think DNA test shouldn't be compulsory and they should not even actually encourage it. We as leaders at personal level are more discouraging it because all children are important, whether you are or not. Let's raise our children. Because when you make it compulsory, it will divide our families and increase family violence. And for us, for, as leaders, we are promoting peace, not violence. So I'm discouraging it really. We should raise children, whether you are or not. And by the isolation of women, how people are pinning women as though women are having children and they are fellow women. It's women against men. Whereas you are complaining about the children in your family, born by another man, it means some other man actually elsewhere is only pregnant with that wife. So it is just about moral decay in society. Don't isolate women. As you say, fear women, you should also fear men that go to those women whom they know they are really married. So it's the moral decay we must address. Number two, I see people talk about the, the DNA as an issue. The issue actually is not DNA. The issue should be the psychological torture you, chew, you make against the child, also the infant. I have seen a situation in my constituency where someone wrote in his will that he should not be buried unless the, a particular child is taken out of his family. That means that person kept with the, the secret with him up to the death. Now look at the child who is, in, who is informed at the point of the death of his father in court that the one he assumed to be a father is not the dad. So he has actually more, 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 more torture than anybody else. He has lost a father and has lost a family. So what the minister should be bringing to us now is not only issues speaking to the credibility of the laboratories. When I saw the minister speak in parliament, he was talking about the credibility of laboratories. No. Talk about the families, the distortion you're going to cause the families, the psychological effect you're causing to the child, to the woman, and also the man as so a whole. That should be or what? what should be done? I am a Muslim, and a Muslim faith, a child belongs to a house. Once a child is produced in a house, you the head of the house, you are the father of that child. Actually, my faith does not promote DNA okay. testing. My faith says if a child is produced from within your home, you should be able to accept that child as your child. And anyway, they say that those who fornicate are able to, to, to marry 
people of the same character. You may find that those very women, men, who are complaining about children producing their families, they are also holding children, their children are being held in other families. You marry one you deserve.